All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast. I'm Joe Bond, co-host. <laughs> I'm just going to call you out on that one. Uh, I'm going to lower myself for you. You good? <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, no, my name is Joe Bond, fan of FantasySixPack.net. With me, as always, is co-host Azure, Dave Eddy. What's up, man? Um, I tell you what, this has been one of the the least stressful Sundays that I've had in a while. Oh yeah, yeah, man. I uh, I gave up on the Lions officially last week, <laughs> so I, I simply watched Red Zone all day. Uh, yeah, that's that's good. I um I've been there for a couple of years with the Redskins, so I know how mm-hmm. you feel. Um, yeah. it's it's an interesting it's an interesting uh, way to watch football. You just watch it and enjoy it. You don't stress about your team trying to blow it which they do constantly yeah. so all right man so we are at uh the start of the second half of the dallas cowboys and the vikings game it is oh man i'm blanking on the score right now i just looked at it too um i think it's tied right 14 17 14 maybe i don't know that was terrible I think it's seventeen fourteen. Yeah. Anyway. If you go right before the half. Yeah, seventeen fourteen Vikings. I did miss that. I was talking to the wife, so apologies there. Uh, but yeah, so it's been an interesting game. Vikings got out big early. Uh, two touchdowns to Rudolph. We all predicted that. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's getting to be Christmas time. Yeah. Right. Um, and then Dallas came back. Uh, big play to Gallup. I know that. Um, you know, it's we'll we'll see what happens here. But you know, both the uh, both the running backs haven't really p- picked up things here yet. But uh, I expect some big plays here in the second half for both those guys are too good to be held in check. Uh, got any other thoughts on it? No, it'll be interesting. I mean, two pretty good teams here. It's close. Um, we'll we'll see exactly how it plays out. Indeed, indeed. All right, man. So we're going to switch things up a little bit this week. Um, you know, we, we kind of thought change of pace here. We'll let you lead the show and uh, let you roll with it. Start off with your with your team here. So is this like a case of like squeaky wheel gets the grease where I just call myself the fantasy six pack bitch. And now you're going to just kind of shut me up for a minute by making me talk oddly enough. Uh, yeah, man, you, you better you better <laughs> you better prove yourself. Let's do it. Oh God! All right, I don't want to disappoint you. <laughs> oh no, that'll be alright. Well, You're good. Let's uh, let's start with the absolute gem of the day. Then uh, Lions and Bears. Man, what a what a great game that was to not watch. Um, so Matthew Stafford was out for this game, so that definitely made me more enjoy that I wasn't going to watch this debacle. Mm. Um, but Driscoll wasn't terrible, all things considered. Um, went for two sixty nine, touching a pick. Um, you know, no run game to speak of, so uh, not much there. But uh, Galladay got three for 57 and a touch, Jones five for 77. So, I guess about what you would expect, maybe from a Staffordless Lions. Um, then the other side of the ball, the, the winning team, you know, all pro quarterback Mitchell Trubisky with his, you know, three touchdown day. Uh, Montgomery got 17 carries, only got 60 yards, and uh, then Allen Robinson had. Six catches for 86. Um, so now the Lions, Joe, let's say that Stafford's out for the rest of the year, which I don't know if that's going to be the case, but it, it's possible. What would you say as far as like fantasy relevant, fantasy reliable players coming off that team with, with him out? Yeah, it's tough, man. Obviously, we, we've already written off the run game and for good reason. You know, I still think Galladay and Jones are are useful, but you knock them you knock them down a peg for sure. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned how Galladay had three for fifty seven today. I mean, one was a forty seven yard touchdown. I mean, <laughs> that was all he had. I mean, it was yeah, it was like oh, some someone asked me today uh, on Twitter like should they start Galladay or Crowder, and I was like, uh, you still roll with Galladay, and I felt horrible all day until that pass, and I was like, yes, redeem. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's 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 not going to be pretty, man. I mean, the Bears aren't the defense they used to be, but they're still pretty good. But I mean, I don't know. Driscoll, he he didn't look good today, man. Like twenty seven or forty six. Uh, it was just volume for him. It wasn't that he was good. It was volume. 
So the volume isn't bad in fantasy. I mean, you know, that's it, true. But I, I don't think anyone. I don't think you know Driscoll's mob would start him in a fantasy league. But um, you know, I guess if, if you if you had to for some freaking unbelievable reason, I guess you want you want him to throw it forty six times. No, I mean nobody starting Driscoll. I think you know you're looking for volume from the receiver standpoint and just hoping that Galladay can pull down more than three of his nine targets. Um, yeah, that's so pretty bad. That that's what you're hoping for. But it's it's you're not feeling good about starting you know these guys going forward. Not as good as you were, but I, reg- I so, you know I digress. Yeah. So so let's flip it on the Bears side then. Um, I mean Montgomery's you know had a couple nice weeks in a row. I thought he would have a really big game this week. Um, I pretty much had almost 100% exposure to him in DFS. And against this defense, he only went for 60 yards on the 17 carries. So, I mean, I guess what's your outlook then the rest of the year um, for Montgomery after this week? I still think you can slot keep him in that kind of RB2, uh, you know, lower end RB2 territory. The he the difference between, a, a you know, a bad quarterback getting volume – is that you know? Yeah, they might have some some garbage time games, but you know, a running back getting volume is just gonna usually mean he's gonna stay relevant every week. And Montgomery's getting all the volume here for them. Uh, I mean, seventeen carries, they only rushed the ball twenty four total times. So, and that includes Trubisky running three. Um, unfortunate game for him, you know, against a, a pretty porous Detroit run defense. Uh, but I, I expect him to bounce back and have some pretty good games. What was kind of shocking to me is that he wasn't involved in the passing game at all. Uh, he kind of had been the last couple of weeks um, a little bit more than this week, which was zero. So, well, I mean, when you have a high school quarterback on your team, uh, you know, yeah. I wouldn't expect too much in the passing game any given week. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know who their backup is, man. But people got to be calling for it. It's it's <laughs> looking bad, dude. So the the next game is pretty much the only only game that didn't really have a lot of suspense to it. Uh, Ravens 49, Bengals 13. Uh, Lamar Jackson basically did Lamar Jackson things. And, you know, everything else was pretty well spread out. They, they got ahead real early, uh, real big, and then pretty much didn't see any of uh, Lamar in the fourth quarter. And then the Bengals, um, Brian Finley had his first NFL start. I guess all in all, you know, um, about what I guess you would expect from him. I don't think we would expect Mixon to go for 30, 30 carries and 114 yards when they're getting their ass handed to him. But, um, but that's exactly what happened. Um, so for the Ravens, um, I mean, not a great game from Ingram. Um, 34 yards and a touch um, on just nine carries. It's not like anyone else really you know, got, got the load of carries there. So what's your level of concern as far as you know, Ingram being even a, a RB2 for the rest of the year? Uh, as far as being an RB two, I'm not, I think that's kind of where he belongs. Um, you know, it, it is concerning that in a blowout game like this, he didn't get double digit carries at least, but I mean, we've seen him get in, you know, stay in that, you know, 19, 13, 12, 15 attempts, you know, every week here. Um, it, it's just, I mean, you're, you're going to ride the highs and lows with him. I mean, you're going to get these weeks where Lamar just goes off and, you know, Lamar or not Lamar, uh, Ingram's going to be, you know, he's either going to bust a big play or he's going to be like a you know, short yardage, you know, dump in the fall into the end zone type of guy. And I mean, that's unfortunately kind of where we are with a lot of our RB twos. <laughs> There's just not a lot out there. So I'm not super concerned. He's still, he's still going to be a guy you're going to want to plug in most weeks. Yeah. And so, I mean, this was a little bittersweet for me and the, the DFS podcast this week, um, my co-host Pat was all in on Ingram. That, that was his guy this week. And um, I was all in on Lamar. And he said this would be the, the week that Lamar was off. And, well, I can't wait to rub it in his face that <laughs> I was spot on. And he was as dumb as I said he was. So, um, But, I mean, do you think that Lamar is the number one quarterback in fantasy at this point? Or is it still like Mahomes? Or do we just... I mean, flip a coin, who cares? It, I, I kind of think it's flip a coin, who cares, right? I mean, yeah, these guys are right. both sick. Uh, you know, Lamar's got more of the running behind him. Uh, so I think if you're looking at total points, it could be Lamar. But that also adds risk to Lamar's game. And so that's kind of why I still put Mahomes up there. Mahomes can run, but that's not like that's not anything he relies on. Um, he uses his legs to find 
and almost to get people open. Um, so Lamar can too, but doesn't do it as much. He will take off. So yeah, I mean Lamar could be a starting running back in this uh, league. I mean just, just about that man. run that he had today, spinning oh, around whew. and juking people. I mean, that was sick. I mean come on, dude. Can you imagine? <laughs> he made uh, like two dudes fall down. <laughs> it was so nasty. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Um, so not a whole lot to touch on on the Bengals. Like I said, Finley made his first start. Um, I'm pretty sure he's going to get the run the rest of the year, oh, barring yes. something goofy happening. Um, any thoughts on the offense with Finley instead of Dalton? 30 carries for Mixon? Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and he did well. Like I mean, like 3.8 average. But, hey, you're going to give my running back 30 carries? I'm putting him back in my lineup every freaking week. Now, I'm not throwing it again next week. Um, although I do not know who they're playing because I never looked the week ahead, but uh, it's you know if he can do something like this again, uh, yeah, Mixon's moving back up my board because he's been on you know my shit list for the last you know six weeks. I've just benched his ass, but that's something I'm looking out for. So, so the next one had an interesting line uh, betting line. It actually um, had. The Browns, I think it ended as two and a half point favorites against the Bills. And um, I, I guess that was the seventh time in the last 25 years that a team with a 250 winning percentage or lower was favored over a team with a 750 winning percentage or lower. But Browns 19 and, and Bills 16. So, I mean, they, they were spot on the money with that one. Yeah, pretty um, shocking finish. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, so, I mean, Allen had the game you would – expect him to have it anymore in, in my opinion uh 266 yards nothing extra um brown five catches for 77 yards beasley four for 74 um singletary only had the the eight carries for 42 yards so that was a little bit disappointing um but the brown side of the ball they had some pretty interesting numbers uh mayfield wasn't as terrible as usual so 238 for two terrible touches there. as usual nice <laughs> uh, well you know it is what it is man so <laughs> Uh, you know, Chubb got his 20, 20 carries for 116. Uh, Landry almost 10, 10, and 1, so 9 for 97 with a touch. And then they were feeding the ball to OBJ, uh, 12 targets. He only caught five of them for 57 yards. But That's what they said they were going to do. What's that? That's what they said they were going to do. I, and, and I had him in DFS at 6,100, um, but, you know, didn't didn't really pan out too great. But uh, the interesting stat line, the thing I was most curious to see was how they were going to work Kareem Hunt into mm-hmm. there. Um, exactly. And, I mean, he, he did probably a little bit better than, than you would be hoping for. Um, only four carries. and got 30 yards out of that. But uh, nine targets in the air. Caught seven of them for 44 yards. So, you know, that's interesting. Um, so if we go back to the Bills, at, at this point now, I think we've seen enough of them that you can make a pretty good – um, you know, summary of their offense. So, I mean, how do you view that offense at this point, Joe? I mean, the only guys I'm really looking to use here, you know, Josh Allen's usually pretty solid. Uh, you know, the two rushing touchdowns, I mean, that's, that's what you're getting from him. Uh, not fantastic passing numbers. He's going to scramble around, get in the end zone once, you know, at least. Um, so you're looking that, I, I think Singletary's, Gonna be better. Uh, it's just a weird game. I don't really know what they were doing. Um, and then John Brown's kind of the only receiver I'm even worth looking at using. Like Beasley's like a desperation play, but other than that, it's nothing. But I mean, like you don't feel awesome using any of these guys, honestly, except for Allen. I don't even. I don't like Allen. I wouldn't. I, I don't either. Like but I mean, I he, mean, John Brown would be my guy from that team. He's. I mean, he's never gonna blow it up. You know, he's never gonna go ten for one twenty five and two touches. Just because of that offense, but he's he's consistent, you know. Yeah, I mean, he's like a he's like a low end wide receiver three, in my opinion, in in most leagues. So it's like, you know, yeah, it's useful, but you're not you're not like, oh man, he's gonna win me my week. No, <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. So on the other side of the field, in the Browns, um, I mean, obviously they've got big names all over the place, mm-hmm. um, and for the most part, you know, everyone had an all right game today so um i've always said they kind of are very i mean all year they've been very up and down so i mean what are the big names there from the browns especially now that you had kareem hunt into the mix that that you feel comfortable with trusting uh i mean obviously chubb i think that's the no-brainer i think you're still rolling out obj um you know landry's in the mix and you know i do want to i do want to talk a little bit about hunt and 
not that I fully trust him yet, but I was surprised at how involved he was, you know, early. You know, yeah, four carries, but 30 yards. I mean, seven and a half yards per carry clip, dude. That's phenomenal. Um, he had nine targets. He caught seven for 44. I mean, you're talking like he's already thrust himself into like flex territory, you know, in 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 most leagues. If he's gonna be a running back that's gonna catch seven passes, see nine targets, that's immediate flex territory. Um, I almost pulled the trigger and started him today because I got screwed by the Stafford news and had McKissick in there, and I was like, oh. I'll throw in Hunt, and then at the last minute, I switched it out for Josh Reynolds, which I kind of wish at this point I hadn't, but oh well. Um, so just because he, you didn't know what they were going to do with Hunt. I mean, he could have had like a two-catch game for 10 yards, and you would have been like, well, what the hell? Uh, but he does this. That's that's something I want to keep an eye on for sure. And, I mean, again, I think he's right in there in flex, flex conversation. So next game, we got uh, Chiefs and Titans. This one was actually one hell of a game. Um, Chiefs 32, uh, Titans 35. Uh, Patrick Mahomes came back and had himself a nice day. Uh, 446 yards in the air, three touchdowns. Um, LaShawn McCoy was a healthy scratch, so it might be pretty safe to say he's done in KC. Uh, So Damian Williams stepped in. Uh, He got 19 carries for 77 yards. Uh, Tyreek Hill had a, a big day as well. Uh, 11 catches for 157 and a touchdown on 19 targets. They were throwing the ball to him like crazy. He actually looked like he might have hurt his collarbone again um, at some point second or third quarter, but he came back pretty quick. And then Kelsey had seven for 75 and a touch. Actually, he had a touchdown brought back. Um, on a he penalty. trucked some, so, dude. <laughs> what is um, ridiculous. A, a, a beast of a touchdown, too. Woo! Um, but on that side of the ball there, um, with the chiefs, like I said, McCoy was a healthy scratch. So uh, what kind of investment would you put into Damian Williams at at this point? I mean, you know, I don't know how long McCoy is going to be, you know, in the doghouse, you know, they're saying he's being benched for, you know, fumble issues and whatever. And it's just, I think he's done, man. I think he's done in Casey. Yeah, I mean, if if that really is the case, and I'm sure we'll hear more early this next week, uh, then yeah, Damian Williams has to be 100% owned, has to be 100% started. I mean, you can't not start the starting running back who's going to get 19 out of 25 carries, uh, and he gets plenty of work in the passing game in a Kansas City offense. You just can't do it. I mean, we saw how he finished last year, and I think you could see it again. I mean, he's that he is good enough to do that, and his offense is capable enough of producing, as we see year in and year out, a running back one. So, I mean, when you look at 35 points from the Titans, um, if I would have known that prior to setting my DFS lineups, I would have I would have probably shit myself because I was all in on AJ Brown this week, um, and AJ Brown had one whole catch for 17 whole yards. So that was a bummer. Yeah. Um, I mean, Tannehill, 181 yards, two touches. Okay. A um, little bit less than we'd seen from him, but probably about what, you know, you probably should expect from him. But um, it was Derrick Henry with 23 rushes for 188 yards, uh, two touchdowns, one of them a 68-yard touchdown run where it actually looked fast for the first time and then, I don't know, that I can recall. Um, so it was nice. I'm sure the, the Henry owners were happy to see him have his biggest game of the year. Um, so that was awesome. But I mean, without Corey Davis playing, what the hell happened to AJ Brown? You know, I, I don't really know, man. And, and I, I don't have the snap count numbers in front of me for this game, but you he, know, he played. but did he, he, he was put, out there? Was he, was he out there like the whole time? Because yeah. if you look at like he, his his snap count numbers from before, like before this game, he's been hovering like no more than like fifty percent. So like I, I I was high on AJ Brown, but I was still leery. Like I thought the risk was there big time that he just isn't ready for like full time load. Uh, so am I totally surprised? No, but I am I am a little bit surprised. Like I was not expecting one for seventeen, considering he's done way better than this with less. Um, you know, it could just be another one of those things where you know, we're kind of underselling the Kansas City defense. They've been pretty solid this year. Um, and A.J. Brown is just not ready to get the the primary, you know, 
you know, the primary defense from the from the secondary. Um, I mean, that that's really what this could just be chalking down to. It's just, I don't know. I was really bummed, man. I, I once I heard Corey Davis was out. Like I said, I, I end up with quite a nice share of AJ Brown. I and you man, probably and a lot of other people, dude. Yeah, that was a bummer. Um, probably the surprise of the week, uh, Atlanta Falcons or whatever Falcon. <laughs> how the hell you fucking say it, Joe? Falcons. Atlanta twenty six. Whatever. Saints. Saints <laughs> nine. Um, really interesting in this one that Atlanta was ahead the whole way. Um, and Saints. Couldn't even, you know, they, they had quite a few possessions there in the fourth quarter, and they just couldn't make a comeback at all. Uh, Matt Ryan didn't do a whole lot, 182 yards, uh, two touches in a pick. Uh, Devontae Freeman ended up getting hurt, didn't play the second half, so Brian Hill um, led that team in carries, uh, 20 for 61. Uh, neither Julio or Ridley did a whole lot. Both had three catches. Uh, Julio went for 79, though, uh, Ridley for 28, and then uh, Hooper – squeaked in there with four catches uh 17 yards and a touch um so i don't know i mean after, after seeing matt ryan come back um against the what's been a really good saints offense um has anything changed for you when when you're looking at the the atlanta team not really i mean i don't i mean like this this game was bad offensively for them but they didn't need to do anything it was weird like the the D line for this team was just straight up dominating the Saints, and so their offense didn't need to go off. I mean, what would have we been saying week in and week out for the Falcons? They get behind early, and then it's just pass, 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 pass. Matt Ryan has fifty passing attempts, and he scores a bunch. Julio and Ridley and Hooper and everybody just goes off and just volume, 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 and and it works. Um, you know, Ryan usually has a couple picks every game or, you know, there's a fumble here and there or something. So I was actually all in on the Saints defense this week because you're just looking at all the turnovers the Falcons have. And it, it just was like, okay, maybe they'll give up some points, but who doesn't, right? And so right. you just were going for the sacks. You were going for the interceptions. You were going, you know, for whatever. And, man, it was like the complete opposite. It was crazy. Um, yeah. I'm not worried yeah. about the Falcons offense at all, though. I mean, I think they're they're going to be good enough. You know, they're good players. You're not benching these guys. Yeah, now the, 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 the Saints was a lot different here. Um, I mean, Breeze only went for 287, so no touchdowns, no picks. Uh, like I said, they were behind pretty much right off the get-go. So um, Kamara had four carries for 24, Murray five for 12, nothing there. But, I mean, as always, um, there's Michael Thomas, 13 catches, 115 yards on 14 targets. So basically you throw it to him, he's going to catch it. Um, and then Kamara got eight, um, eight catches for 50 yards. He had 10 targets as well. Um, I mean, God, I was so in on Cooper Cup this week, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But, I mean, if, if we're being honest, I guess, is, is there really any wide receiver week in and week out that you trust more than Michael Thomas? No. <laughs> He's been no, so good, dude. Simple, right? There you it's go. Just, good there's um, not a whole lot so, else to say there. Uh, what about Kamara coming back? So um, I know I, I was a little bit concerned maybe about, you know, Murray did so well filling in that, you know, how much was he going to eat into Kamara's touches? And this isn't the best game, I guess, to look at that because they were behind and they were throwing a lot. But, um, you know, after watching the game today, any level of concern about Kamara's workload? I don't think I'm worried about the workload. I'm just worried about Kamara. He didn't look right, man. It's just the eye test there, really. Um he maybe it was just rust. It just he looked off. He didn't look like he had the, the you know the bounce that he usually did. I mean, yeah, ten targets. It, it ended up like working out if in your PPR league, like you're 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 fine with it. Um, but in a game like this, man, you expected Kamara to go off, and you know we'll see what happens next week. It's not like I'm benching him because he had one kind of meh week, but you know it's it's just it looked sort of concerning. But I mean, it really could have just come down to this this offensive line was just getting destroyed. I mean, they gave up six sacks to the Falcons who I think doubled their season total. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean, I, especially at the end of that game, it seemed like every time breeze was dropping back, if he wasn't getting taken down, he was getting pressured. It, yes. It just, it just didn't look right. I mean, it just didn't look right, man. Yeah, uh, next game on the slate here. Um, I'm assuming that nobody outside of New York gave a shit about it. Um, it's the giants and the jets. Oddly enough, it was a pretty decent game. Uh, it was. Jets, yeah, Jets 34, Giants 27. Uh, Daniel Jones, again, had a statistically nice game. Uh, 308 and four touches. I don't think anyone will complain about that. Uh, Slayton and Tate both had two touchdowns. 
Uh, Slayton ended up with 10 catches for 121 yards as well. So uh, with Ingram and Shepard out, he definitely stepped up quite a bit. Um, but but the news got to be out of this game is Barkley with his 13 carries for one yard. Um, I know that um, they were talking about him being injured after the game, but they didn't really say a whole lot about it. So, you know, after Barkley's missed some time and came back and then you, you get this game, um, I mean, what kind of concern do you have about, about Barkley going forward? Yeah, I, there's, you know, if I had any level of concern for Kamara, the concern for Barkley is probably double that. Um, you know, we've seen, you know, two, I mean, this game was way worse than last one, but the last game wasn't anything fantastic any, either. So, yeah, it, it could just be that, you know, teams are just going, okay, you need to beat us with everybody else. And, I mean, Jones is proving that he sort of can. Uh, but it's just, yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going on here with Barkley. You know, it, it, he's, he's, again, he's just one of those players that you just can't bench right now. He's just that electric, you know, it's unless news comes out and says like, Oh, his ankle's bothering him or there's something else going on. I don't think you can bench Barkley, man. Like it's just, you just can't do it. Uh, um, dude, dude's too elite. Let, I mean, I mean, they literally, but, I mean, he went right right into uh, X-rays after the game. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I mean, there, there's something wrong with him. I I don't know what it is at this point. Um, maybe they said more, and I just didn't hear about it. But it, it, it's an injury anything. thing. Yeah. Um. So Jets side of the ball, the the winners over here. Uh, Darno was whatever two thirty for a touch. Um. Thomas and Crowder, similar type games. Uh. Thomas six for eighty four. Uh. Crowder five for eighty one and a touch. But man, Le'Veon Bell again. Um, <laughs> his longest run of the day was a whole four yards. Um, managed to sneak into the end zone. Um, volume was still there, 18, 18 rushes, but thirty-four yards to go with it, and caught all four of his targets for thirty-four yards. Um, I kind of gave up on on Bell as of last week. Um, but I mean, at this point in, in time, Joe, for you, season-long leagues, um, DFS. I mean. Do you have any faith in Le'Veon Bell doing anything substantial? Not really. I mean, you, you're looking at you're looking at a guy who's probably you know, uh, you know, back end RB two. You know, I, I I'm thankfully I own him in a league where I've got Cook and Carson as well. Like I just loaded up on running backs, so he's kind of been like a flex guy, and I just kind of keep him in there because eh, I mean, whatever is my flex, I'll, I'll take the chance that he can just go up you know go off or catch five six seven eight passes right and just kind of stay relevant um it's it's not pretty this team isn't good um you know and i guess better defenses i would consider sitting him um but you know i just know not everybody has that luxury like if you drafted bell he's probably the guy you need to roll with because running backs are you know not out of you know there's there, a lot of teams don't have a lot of good running backs on their, uh, you know, for on their fantasy team. So you, you just got to roll with bell and just hope he figures it out. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the game that most people were, were keeping the biggest tabs on uh, Cardinals and bucks. Uh, so bucks end up getting the win here, 30 to 27. Um, I mean, Kyler Murray had a, had a pretty good game. All things considered, um, you know, 324 yards, uh, three touchdowns and a pick. Uh, didn't really do anything on the ground, um, but but Kirk had six catches for 138 yards and three touchdowns. Um, so he definitely definitely paid off big. And then Murray and Isabella have a have a nice little connection going on. Um, he only you know had three targets, but cut all three of them for 78 yards. And then Fitzgerald did his usual um, eight for 71. Um, so you know, nice day from from Murray. Uh, but I, what I wonder about this team isn't really much to do with this particular game. It's, it's what, what's going to happen when Edmonds and Drake and Johnson, all three of them are, are finally healthy. What what do you think, you know, not just from that offense, but just from that backfield. Yeah. You know, AJ and I talked about this on the fantasy six pack hour this past week. And, and honestly, I, I don't really know. I, you know, I went into this week thinking this was still David Johnson's backfield and, you know, he'll get, I don't know, 60% of the touches and things like that, but it definitely didn't happen this week. In fact, David Johnson, I mean, he did 
bad. I mean, there's nothing else to say. Like he did bad five for two. He caught one pass. He was targeted once. Um, you know, maybe he's still not fully healthy and they just kind of had to throw him out there because they can't rely on Drake to carry the load like he did last week. Um, and, you know, you just hope it's like a game where David Johnson was just not, not, you know, in it. It just knocking some rust off or, or whatever. Like just had to, you know, grease up the wheels again or whatever. But, I'm worried if I'm a David Johnson owner. Like again, he's just another one of those first round running backs that just isn't painting out. Um, it's just it's tough, man. It's, it's tough as a David Johnson owner, and I do have him in one league, so it is. It hurts to have him and watch him struggle like this. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was interesting. Like I, I agreed with you. I in DFS, I had a couple of shares of, of David Johnson just in case, uh, and then that obviously didn't work out very well. Um, now Winston on the other coin there didn't have a great day. Um, but I mean, against that defense, um, he still put up numbers. So 358, uh, touchdown, couple of, couple of bad picks. Yes. Um, naturally. I mean, come on. That's James weird Winston. picks. Uh, neither Evans or, or Godwin really went crazy. Uh, Godwin had twice as many targets. He had, uh, 12 targets, caught six of them for 74 yards. And then Evans caught four of his six targets for 80 yards. Um, but I totally called uh, on the on the DFS podcast uh, Ronald Jones to have a, a nice day, uh, and he did. Uh, his, I think he was like forty three hundred, so he was super cheap. Um, you know, he only had twenty nine yards on the ground, but he did get in the end zone, and then had eight targets, um, caught them all for seventy seven yards. So um, I was pretty happy about that. Uh, but now with kind of Jones taking things over. Um, in the back in the backfield, and you know Winston going a little while there without having a complete blow up game. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts with that Buccaneers offense right now? I mean, it's still gonna be just yeah, they're gonna put up numbers. Uh, Winston's are gonna be one of those guys that at the end of the year he's gonna be a quarterback one, but you're gonna look at it and go like, uh, I don't want to draft him again next year, but. Uh, you know, I am throwing him out there in a league where I've got Wentz, who I just can't trust right now. It's just, it is what it is with Winston. You know, you're going to get games where he throws five picks and you're going to go, what in the hell? But then he has games like this where you're like, all right, I mean, you threw two picks. You still threw for one touchdown. You threw for 350 yards. All right, you did enough. I'm okay with you. Um, I do want to point out the fact that OJ Howard actually is alive. <laughs> It's not going to happen again, but okay. Enjoy, yeah. everybody. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Arizona is um, atrocious to, to the tight ends. So, um, yeah, for sure. Covering tight ends. So, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So, next game on the slate uh, Dolphins and Colts. Um, 16 to 12, Dolphins victory. So, somebody, somebody shut down the Dolphins, man. Um, they're just they're on fire right now. Uh, I mean, if you if you got they're Ryan blowing their two and Belage and Parker on your team, I mean, you're going to win some games too, right? No, no, <laughs> no. Um, so I mean, let we'll make it quick on the Dolphins here because there's not a lot to talk about. Um, I mean, do you trust anyone other than Devonte Parker on this team, or do you even trust Devonte Parker? I I barely trust Devonte Parker, but yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. No. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. Right. So then, I mean, the Moving Colts are, are just going to be a, a shell um, right now. They don't have Brissett. They don't have Ty. Um, Ugh, yeah. So they're brutal. hurting. Um, they still got Marlon Mack, but Marlon Mack is finding you know not a lot of holes mm. to, to run through whenever you know all the other playmakers are gone. And I I hate to say it, but um, do you think that my best friend uh, Eric Baby Dick Ebron is maybe the best fantasy option on that team right now? Uh, 12, 12 targets this week. I mean, hey, it, I guess as long as Hoyer's back there, Hoyer seems to like the throw to the tight ends, apparently. But uh, he like he liked the throw to the Dolphins today, too. Yes, he did. Three picks. Way, way to go, brother. Um, yeah. I had to start him in one league. It's a dynasty league, and my quarterbacks were Wentz and Brissett. So I had to rush out and grab Hoyer. Uh, it probably would have been better should, off just should not. Should have grabbed Driscoll. What were you thinking? I don't know, man. Who cares? <laughs> Pick up Kaepernick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough sledding for the for the Colts until they can get Brissett back. Uh, but this was I still did not expect. I don't think anybody expected the Dolphins to win this game, regardless. So, 
No, Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's hard. It's hard to do a lot of analysis when the Colts are down, you know, to Brian Hoyer and without Ty. Yeah. So, like I said, when Eric Ebron is probably your best option, you have a problem. Yeah. Panthers sixteen, Packers twenty four. Um, this was a pretty good game too. Um, I mean, they they had to review the last play of the game to see if McCaffrey managed to get into the end zone. He ended up being probably got a, a foot short. Um, yeah, it was close uh, of scoring that touchdown to give him a chance for the two point to tie it up, which I needed because um, I had McCaffrey literally one hundred percent exposure this week, um, and I needed not only that touchdown, but I needed the opportunity for him to get more in overtime. But it is what it is. Um, so Allen actually had a career high, uh, 307 yards passing, uh, touchdown and a pick. Uh, let's see, DJ Moore, uh, nine catches for 120. I think he's, one, if, if not one of the um, the most underrated player right now, I think, in, in, at least in DFS. I mean, he's 5,200, I think, this week. Um, ridiculous. And then Olsen actually had a nice game with Allen back there. So uh, he had eight for 98. Mm-hmm. Now, McCaffrey, um, I mean, he did McCaffrey things. Um, it's, it's pretty yeah. funny that you can look at his stat line and kind of wonder if this is his floor, but um, 20 rushes for 108 yards in a touch and six catches for 33 yards. So uh, is that kind of about the worst you think that we're going to expect out of him going forward? Not that that's a bad game, but, I mean, that's just how crazy he's been this year. Yeah, I mean – I don't see him doing any worse than that, honestly. I mean, you're 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 right on with that. I mean, there's just he's been so good. Um, it, 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 yeah, like he's this has to be probably his worst statistical game all season. So it's just pretty crazy. And he still was good. It's it's just yeah, he's been so ridiculous this year. Um, I feel like we've said this many times, but um, pedestrian game from Rogers. Um. 233 yards. That's it. Um, yep. This game was all on the ground. So Aaron Jones, uh, 93 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, Williams, 13 carries for 63 yards. Uh, Devontae Adams came back, and he had a pretty decent game, um, seven for 118. So that was pretty nice. Aaron Jones is a guy that scares me because he really, really is hit or miss. He either puts up you know, a day like today or, or bigger, or you get nothing from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, do you consider Jones a running back one at this point? Which is kind of crazy because he leads the NFL in touchdowns, and I'm asking you if you think he's a running back one. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to. Um, they just they just rely on him so much, especially short yardage, um, which is why Rodgers isn't getting the touchdowns. I mean, that used to be Rodgers' M.O., right? They'd get down to the three-yard line, and he would throw the ball to Jordy Nelson or somebody like that, right? They don't have that anymore. They've got Jones, they've got Williams, they've got guys capable of just pounding it in. So they're doing it, and they don't need to put Rodgers in harm's way. And they're still winning games, so they're not going to change until it fails. And I don't blame them. So it just sucks for Rodgers owners. You drafted him super early. It's tough to bench him, but honestly, like there's a reason why I've called him my bust three of the last four weeks on the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. And I've been right two out of the three. <laughs> um, it was that crazy, like five touchdown game that I was wrong. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's an interesting situation for sure. Um, now, for me, this was the most frustrating game of the week: uh, Rams and Steelers. Uh, Steelers win seventeen to twelve. Rams look like fucking shit, man. Um, God, I it's it's so frustrating. Um, I know that, that that Steelers defense has been good all year long. Um, but you want, you want a funny seen... stat? You want a funny stat about that Steelers defense? I was shocked because I had yeah. to look it up. I was wondering about how good they were. Uh, Pro Football Focus rates them the number two overall defense in the in all of football. So that means they're either ahead of the 49ers or the Patriots? They are. Patriots are one. Steelers yeah. are two. Broncos three. Rams four. 49ers five. Okay. I mean, shocking. I had no idea. Their yeah. pass rush is ridiculous. It's tops by like a full six points, hmm. which is a wide margin compared to everything else. 
But I'm telling you what, man, I, um, at the end of the third quarter, I, I seriously had picked up my phone and I was starting to call um, 911 because I wanted to know where the hell Cooper Cup was, man. Yeah, I, I don't I don't understand how he had the land that he had. Um, I, everyone knows that, you know, slot receivers kill the Steelers and, you know, Cooper Cup just amongst receivers in general is at absolute worst top five. And so you, you figure he was just going to go crazy today while well, he had four targets of which he caught as many passes as I caught sitting on my couch watching him today. Absolutely nothing out of him today. Um, now, Everett, on the other hand, he kind of picked up the slack as he had caught eight to 12 targets for 68 yards. And then, you know, Woods came in too, seven for 95. But, I mean, Goff really, really couldn't do much. 243 yards through two picks. Uh, it's just, man, I, that, that team is really confusing to go from, you know, last year, anyone, anyone who had ever had lunch with, Sean McVay was, you know, getting consideration for a head coaching job. And now this offense is, is nothing to talk about. Yeah. Um, they, I mean, they've lost a lot of O-line that that's tough. And, you know, Gurley still isn't what he was that obviously he's, he's struggling. Um, you know, it, the, you mentioned cup the the thing, I, you know, I would mention is like, obviously he started off like gangbusters, right? This whole, this whole season was just like, Oh my gosh, Cooper cup's going to finish like top three receiver. Like it was just crazy how good he was. Right. Three of the last four weeks, he's been pretty mediocre. And then this week is one of them. Just, he's just nowhere. Um, now the one week he was good was against Cincinnati and he went seven for two twenty. <laughs> so, okay. Um, like he's still talented. It's just you know, it's just a matter of you know, you gotta wonder if defenses are starting to figure out. Okay, shut down Cup. Gurley's not the the electric player he once was. The def- the offensive line, you know, you can get pressure, and especially like I mean, this just seemed like the perfect recipe for for Steelers, right? They've got the best pass rush according to Pro Football Focus against a terrible offensive line in the Rams, and Goff just looked like a lost puppy back there. Like he just couldn't get anything done and it showed yeah i mean in this game if you were gonna think somebody was gonna you know gonna look like you know a lost puppy i mean mason rudolph would have been my bet for sure yeah um and i mean statistically he wasn't amazing um i mean completed a little bit over half his passes uh 242 yards and a touchdown but man if you watch those games every week and even from the beginning i i felt like he was more comfortable than you would expect him to be Mm -hmm. but he's really getting comfortable back there um and i know fantasy wise i mean who gives a shit i guess to some extent but um you know he's 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 leading that team to you know a level that i don't think anyone would have thought when when ben went down um so i mean that that team's been playing pretty well now samuels didn't quite have the same game he had last week i don't think anyone remotely would have expected that um 29 on the ground um three catches for 11 in the air so he didn't really do a whole lot um juju was Almost completely shut down by Jalen Ramsey, three for forty-four is you know obviously not a good day for him. No. Um, on only six targets, but but James Washington stepped up. Mm-hmm. Um, he had six for ninety. Had had a couple really big catches during that game as well. Um, so it's a little more than just the numbers, but um, I mean, I guess you did talk about it a, a little bit, but but just just to kind of wrap things up here with, with everything, like at what level do you actually trust this Pittsburgh defense? I know you just talked about being, you know, number two, but I mean, do you really put them fantasy wise up there with the 49ers and the Patriots? I don't, they're not getting the turnovers. Um, so, you know, but the, the, the sacks are nice. So you're getting that now today they got some, some fumbles and they recovered a few of them, but, um, it's uh, I don't know. It's there. I mean, they're definitely in consideration every week, you know, for a defense that you can use, uh, just to be on the safe side. But yeah, it's they're not up there to me with San Fran and New England. Those two teams are just d- dominating, and and Baltimore starting to climb up there too. Um, the one thing I want to say about this Pittsburgh team, real quick, is that uh, it's it's tough for like Juju Smith Schuster owners. Um, you, you're looking at like the targets here, right? So you know, mentioned how like kind of safe and whatever Rudolph has been. I mean, seven targets for James Washington, six for Deontay Johnson, six for Juju, seven for Vance McDonald, seven for Jalen Samuels. I, I mean, but 
they're catching at like a 50% clip, most of them. So that's not good. <laughs> um, and that's just kind of been Juju most of this season without Ben. Uh, he's just not, he's just not making the plays um, consistently enough. Now he's going to blow up. He's going to make a long run and you're going to go, Oh, there he is. But otherwise most weeks have been pretty drub for him, unfortunately. So, you know, I'm not opposed to looking elsewhere. If you've got other options, you know, on your team other than Juju at this point. So you want to go ahead and take this bad boy home, Joe? Yeah, man. All right. Well, that's all we've got. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, hope you did well in week 10, as long as you didn't play me. And uh, we will see you all next week.